Hi, I'm Andrea Young, Assistant Professor of Math and Computer Science at Ripon College. In banking and finance, an amortized loan is one in which the principal is paid down throughout the life of the loan according to some amortization schedule. Typically, the monthly payment is fixed, but the percentage that goes towards principal and interest changes throughout the life of the loan. In this video, we will see how to use a formula to calculate the monthly payments associated with an amortized loan. Mark is a recent college graduate who's just gotten a job in sales. I'm here today to help him buy a new car. Since I will be on the road a lot, my company has given me a car allowance to buy a new car. They have offered to give me $375 a month for five years. Now I just have to decide which one to get. This one is really nice. Yeah, it is. And hey, if I divide the cost by 60, which is 12 payments a year for five years, the monthly payment is $366.65. That is within my monthly budget. I'm going to go find a salesperson. Uh, that computation does not take into account interest. Yeah, but how much could that be? I mean, $366.65 is under my monthly budget. We'll see. Well, 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 have you two decided on a new car? Uh, yeah, I think I'd like to buy this one. And does your girlfriend agree? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> She's no, no, not. I'm, not. I, I, I'm his mathematician. Yeah. Um, we'd like to know a little bit more about the loan you could give Mark. He'd like a five-year loan. Well, this is your lucky day. I can offer you 4.5% APR on a five-year loan. And that's the best rate in town. You know what? Can you give us a minute? Oh, sh sure. Thanks. To calculate your monthly payment, we need to use a formula associated with an amortized loan. Now, a loan is amortized if both the principal and the interest are being paid off in a sequence of equal monthly payments. So the formula for R, which is your monthly payment, is given here. Now, in this formula, P represents the principal amount, so for you, that'll be $21,999. I is the periodic interest rate, which we can find by dividing the 4.5% APR, or 0 0.045, by 12 to get 0 0.00375. Finally, N is the total number of months of the loan, so N equals 60. And if we substitute all of those values into the formula, we get a monthly payment of? $410.13. Yep. That's about $35 a month over budget. And if you multiply that by 60, you'll have paid? $24,607.80. For this car. Have we got a deal? Sorry, I, I can't afford this car. Well, this really is your lucky day because I can either offer you a 3% APR for five years on the original principal of 21999 or a new principal of 19999 with the original APR of 4.5%. Can you give us another minute? Mm, yeah. Let's compare these two scenarios. Now, in the first scenario, we can calculate your new periodic interest rate by taking the 3% APR, or 0 0.03, and dividing it by 12 to get a new periodic interest rate of 0 0.0025. And if we substitute these values into our formula, we get a monthly payment of? $395.29. OK. And over a five-year loan, you'll have paid? $23,717.40. OK. Well, let's look at the next scenario. Now, in this scenario, your periodic interest rate is 0 0.00375, but your principal amount has changed to $19,999. And if we substitute all of these amounts, we get a monthly payment of? $372.84. Hey. hey. 
That's in your monthly budget. And over five years, you'll have paid $22,370.40. <laughs> so notice that even though the two monthly payments are not that different, if you go with the second option, you'll have saved almost $1,350 over the life of the loan. Using the formula associated with an amortized loan, we were able to help Mark determine the best option to give him the lowest monthly payment on his new car. But there are other types of interest as well. For example, simple interest is one in which interest is paid just on the principal amount. Now, simple interest loans are typically given for short-term loans of less than a year. At the other extreme is continuously compounded interest. That means that interest is literally being compounded every instant. So the number of times per year that it's compounded becomes infinite. Now, banks used to offer continuously compounded interest accounts as a way to attract business, but such things seem to be pretty rare among financial institutions these days. Interest is used in a variety of applications in banking and finance, such as loans, investments, retirement funds, and savings accounts. Understanding the basic mathematics of finance and compound interest can really help you manage your money.